welcome all to my presentation, district level correlates of COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm Nandita Saikya from Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. Uh, I'm presenting this paper on behalf of my group, Gautas group, uh, Vandana Ankita Mukesh Dhir Shivali Vandita Appala and Benjamin. Uh, so, whenever we present, whenever we speak any demographic outcome of India, numbers are really huge. Here I'm presenting some basic numbers related to COVID-19 pandemic. So total population of India is 1.38 billion. And we have total confirmed cases as of 30th November, 9.1 million. Active cases, 0.446 million. So recovered cases, uh, 8.8 .8 million, which is like 93, more than 93 percent. Disease cases, uh, 137,000. Total number of people who are tested for COVID-19 is 140 million. And test positivity rate is average 6.5 percent. And recovery, as I said, is more than 90 percent. So uh, India has, if we compare the rank wise, we found that India is reported as the world's second largest hotspot. Uh, Nandita, cannot hear you. Okay. Looks like the connection has been lost for a moment. I hope Nandita is gonna be back with us any minute or second. <laughs> We can wait a little bit, so some one or two minutes. Okay. Hoping she will come back. Mm -hmm. And turn off the video might help, maybe not, but yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Nandita, maybe maybe you can switch. So if you have problems with internet, maybe you can switch off the video while you speak. And yes, maybe this helps. You have to share again your presentation. So uh, yes, so the background is that India is reported as the world's second largest hotspot of COVID-19 cases. Uh, sorry, and Nandita, do you want to share your screen with us again? I see. Is it clear? Yes, now we is can it see it. Visible? Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so number of patients uh, are very big in, um, in India. And in fact, it was the reason uh, what uh, government has expected and it has gone for first, it has gone completely national level lockdown. And later on, of course, it has uh, phase wise, uh, the country was open. So uh, our objective in this study is to examine the district level variation in COVID-19 infection ratio in India during March to July 2020, and also to identify the district level correlates of COVID-19 infection ratio for the same period. So data we have used COVID-19 India dashboard. It is a kind of crowdsourcing data uh, and national family health data for census of, of India information uh, for uh, basic demographic characteristics 2007. And as I said, the period of study was from March no, to July 2020. We did had uh, special analysis, Lisa map and more on iValu. And we also did statistical analysis, multiple regression, adjusted and unadjusted models. Our outcome variable was COVID-19 infection ratio at district level. Infection ratio has been defined as confirmed cases as given point of time um, divided by population at district level multiplied by 100,000. And we used a set of independent variables, demographic, socioeconomic, infrastructure, and health-related variables at district level, which I will explain more later. 
So uh, this figure is presenting trend in trend of number of total confirmed cases by number of days uh, in India. So one line, the black line is indicating how total number of confirmed cases has been increasing over uh, according to the number of days, which is presented in the red line. So when we are saying that uh, 129 people at the beginning are becoming 10, 1,029 people uh, were confirmed at this point of time, have increased to 10,453% in two days period. Where, and similarly, if we see the extreme level, that number of persons um, who have uh, increased from 153,000 to 163,000, it was in only in 15 days. So what we see that, uh, that number has increased very sharply. In short period, the numbers were um, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, COVID-19 infection was increasing. And this figure is showing biweekly average new infected, recovered, and disease cases in India. Uh, here, what we are presenting is average new cases per day in uh, for every two week. So, 63 was the number of persons who were infected or added per day uh, in the first two week, which has increased to 46,900 by the time and by the end of, of our study period. Uh, so per day, uh, the infected new cases were 46,900. Uh, same um, average infected cases, it has uh, like con confirmed cases, total confirmed cases has increased from 63 to 72,000. And we see a kind of exponential increase over time. Um, we also see average has recovered cases are uh, also increasing as per um, uh, the infected cases. And finally, we see the average disease cases were one per day in first two weeks, which increased to 734 per day in the last uh, two weeks of our study period. This, state, uh, this figure is showing the state-wise uh, infection ratio per 100,000, and which are above uh, national average. Uh, so here, uh, it, it has uh, it is the variation was from 145 per 100,000 persons to uh, 44.55 percent. So this Andhra Pradesh, which is located in the southern part, Maharashtra, which is which has been recovered and added as a hotspot, which is uh, situated in the western part, to or natural bodies, uh, which is from the northeast part of India. And uh, as we see, the states which have higher uh, than national Everest, which, and there were also uh, states which were much lower than the national Everest, which is not shown here. This uh, figure is showing district level variations in COVID-19 and on July 31. So number of positive panel A is presenting absolute number of positive um, COVID-19 cases, as, whereas the panel B is showing district level infection ratio defined as the number of uh, confirmed cases per 100,000 population. So we see that there are, are um, very big, a bubble we see it's a, in Maharashtra and in the city called Mumbai and then it has it is also very high uh, in Bangalore and uh, Chennai which are on the two big cities as well as also in Delhi then we see a clear pattern numbers huge um, uh, adjacent districts like several uh, spots we also observe uh, numbers are quite high in the northeastern north states of India 
when we go for a district level uh, infection ratio, then of course we see a slight difference here, for example, in Mumbai, total number of absolute, uh, total number of cases are much higher than uh, Delhi, but when we present in terms of rate, it was Delhi which has higher uh, infection ratio. And we also see there are big spots in the, somewhere in Calcutta, uh, somewhere in no, uh, Assam, um, and also uh, in the western, sorry, southern part, uh, Chennai. This uh, Morani, which is the uh, spatial correlation, and uh, we find that this is in infection ratio, district level infection ratio, which is found to be low, uh, that is 0 0.33. Uh, and the list of cluster map, we see it, there are some hotspots uh, located in uh, Western India, uh, Southern India, and also part of Northern India. Uh, and uh, we see low, low areas are basically from um, this most populous states of India. So when we want to examine and the district level correlates, we have uh, taken about 22 explanatory variables, um, which are like demographic variables, which is percent of uh, 60 years, uh, uh, percent of population 60 years and above, percent of women who has husbands are away from last six months, and that is, uh, which is considered as an in proxy indicator of migration, then population density, then and among socioeconomic variables, we are taking percent of literate population, percent of scheduled caste population, uh, uh, backward uh, deprived uh, uh, socioeconomic group of India, also percent of scheduled tribe population, uh, and percent of Hindu population, percent of urban population, and average persons living, sleeping in one room. Infrastructure variables we have taken uh, percent of household with soap availability, uh, percent of household with water availability in the premise, and also percent of household with toilet facility within premise. Among health related variables, uh, we took a uh, percent of women with diabetes uh, uh, percent at district level, percent of women who reported having cancer, uh, percent of women who have con who are consuming um, tobacco, testing ratio per 100,000, under five mortality rate, percent of institutional bought, percent of uh, full immunization, percent of women reporting anemia, percent of children with stunting or, and wasting. So uh, when, uh, of course, in all these variables, we have huge district level variation, which I'm not presenting here. Uh, I'm directly going for the results from SAM model statistics. Uh, so uh, the first row, uh, first column in this table is showing on a district model. So that is only one variable is increased, uh, included in the model. And Two we are minutes. Seeing, yeah, the relationship. Uh, what we see here that in unadjusted model, uh, 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 we find that uh, migration uh, proxy indicator of migration, population density, percent of urban population, percent of household with soap availability, all these are rela uh, uh, highly related. Whereas in the adjusted model, we find that uh, population density is highly uh, positively related with um, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, also, percent of urban population, percent of uh, SC population, civil cost population, as well as testing ratio. So these are the four main indicators which are found to be highly correlated with district level. So we have uh, observed for in the analysis that there is a huge variation across district in um, confirmed cases in ratio, uh, COVID-19 infection ratio and uh, number of disease everywhere. Infection ratio in India is about 42.38 per 100,000 population and 15 states are above national average. 80% of the new patient uh, and 90% of deaths are concentrated uh, in nine Indian states at that point of time. 
Six high high risk COVID nineteen infected cities are Mumbai, Chennai, Thane, Pune, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. COVID infection ratio is found to be higher in the districts with higher level of population density, higher percent of urban population, higher percent of deprived cost, as well as with higher level of testing ratio. Uh, there are a few uh, strengths and limitations of the study. Uh, our, uh, uh, when COVID pandemic has started, there were a couple of papers which are either published or you know published in, in pre as a preprint. We have observed that those studies has identified uh, COVID nineteen vulnerability based on some strict assumptions. Uh, but uh, this study is slightly different because it is not um, on assumptions, rather it is on experience. For example, when we conduct a uh, vulnerability index, then we always take percent of urban population as a positive indicator. Whereas in reality, in COVID-19 pandemic, we are finding something opposite. So these uh, assumptions are less. Then limitations, we are using crowdsourcing data. There is a high chance that uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, related death and infection ratio might be underreported. Yet, uh, might we, we just expect that underreporting will not very much among district. And also we want to say that this study is basically to see the association and to find out uh, important like hotspot districts and, and uh, the major factors, related factors. Uh, so it is not really a, a kind of uh, causal analysis, mm -hmm. but uh, as we see that okay. we have found some interesting variables to interfere for the pol from policy perspective. <clears throat> 